you know, when we're going after a goal, we spend most of our time focused on the journey. When we do finally reach that goal, often we acknowledge it and then we move on to the next goal. Since hitting the goals most times takes longer than it does to acknowledge our success, we need to ensure that we pay close attention to our own internal happiness and positivity that keeps us motivated. If not, it could lead us to feeling like we're spinning our wheels and we're slipping into unhappiness. One of the things that I try to focus on as I'm going through my goals is to maintain a level of happiness. You know, as I'm going out and knocking out new deals and handing out new LOIs and developing new partnerships. I've come up with five strategies to help keep my internal positivity on track with my goals and I thought I'd share them with you here. Uh, so the first, remind myself that I'm in control of, uh, of what I'm able to, to change. As it is in business, as it is in life, there are only few things within our own immediate control that we can ultimately make a change and make a difference. I focus primarily on what I can change and what I'm able to make better and how I can help others as well. I avoid getting overwhelmed by things that I can't control. For example, if a contractor does not deliver their work on time, I ask myself, what could I have done better to improve the situation? You know, believe it or not, this is extraordinarily hard as we have bad days and sometimes obstacles get in our way. But if we can control our emotions and maintain that positive mindset, you can see through the obstacles and get to the other side of them. Number two, got to watch your language. I talked a bit in the, in the last video in terms of positive language and when you're speaking to investors. The same thing goes for yourself. If you're able to keep yourself in check, you'll do so much better with, uh, with your own personality and your own self-confidence. Do you ever say to yourself, I screwed that up, I'm such an idiot, or I can't believe I'm doing this, I'm, I feel foolish. All this inner dialogue gets built up inside your own head. It's like you're programming yourself with these limiting beliefs. It, it may seem harmless, but believe it or not, it impacts your overall way of being. You, you mustn't allow that kind of self-talk to enter your mind. It's detrimental to yourself and detrimental to your future. You know, if, if I notice I'm having some negative thoughts in a certain situation, a good rule of thumb that I use is if my brother messed something up. You know, would, would I start berating him? You know, would I call him names? Uh, of course not. So, you know, don't berate yourself. That's the way I look at it. Number three, commit to the goal, not the path. Having a goal with a purpose is, is good for you. It's good for your brain. It establishes a focus and it, it gives you that purpose. Now, once you understand what your goal is and you commit to it, you must make sure that you don't get confused between commitment to the goal versus the attachment to the path get to get there. If uh, you think that uh, you have one way to get to that goal, you're not, you're only gonna, you're not gonna be able to see the other opportunities that could lead you to the same thing. You're only gonna see that one direction that your brain is familiar with. It's like you're, you're putting the blinders on and you're ignoring anything else outside of that that can help you achieve your goal. You know, committing to a goal means doing within the limits of your value system, whatever it takes to get there, you know, versus it has to be uh, this way, this time using this process. You know, for example, if you're counting on a friend's money to invest in a certain deal, but for some reason that money is no longer available, you got to think creatively about how to get that funding. You know, obviously stealing is not an option, but going through your social media contacts, finding potential investors, and organizing your proposal and start talking to people as soon as possible. You know, that's the way you would do it. You know, maybe, maybe that very same day it has to happen, but whatever it takes, you got to make it happen. Don't make the mistake of talking yourself into doing things only one way. It may even will turn you off to looking at other possibilities to realize their vision. But when, when you approach it more like a matter of commitment that you'll do whatever it takes to reach your goal, it frees your mind. It opens up your brain to seeing more possibilities and it'll, it'll make that goal happen. 
you'll see other people that uh, you'll want to work with and network with and, and apply collaborative efforts to use other methods to reach out and um, work with other investors you even hadn't considered before. So number four, focus on measuring progress. When you are focusing on what's in your control, like I mentioned earlier, you're going to set metrics around that. You know, if if you hit all those metrics that you define when when you when you set everything up, that's how you define your success. For example, if your goal is to buy an average of three 12 unit apartments for a total of 36 units in the next 12 months, you already recognize that you need to put in some work to get there. You break it down to metrics, metrics that you can control. So to hit your goal, you plan on sending out 20 mailers a week to prospects in your target area. Of course, you can control how many of those mailers will result, you can't control how many of those mailers will result in a lead, but what you can control is sending out the number of mailers, then tracking the results and continually hit that number month over month. You know, So you should focus less on the long-term external results, the 36 units, and focus more on completing and tracking the tasks at hand, those 20 mailers a week. As long as you hit that goal week over week, month over month, you can be happy with the results and possibly even double down if things are, are not moving fast enough for you, but you have a tracking system to measure your progress. And number five, make, make yourself a priority. It's good to have goals, and it's good to have the ambition to bust down walls and reach them. But you need to pay attention to your health, your business relationships, and take time with your loved ones, or you just won't be happy. As, as real estate entrepreneurs, we often neglect this. There's, there's plenty of people that I've spoken to and even interviewed on my podcast, the same sort of thing. We're often so busy building our businesses that we may neglect our bodies in terms of diet and exercise and stress our relationships with our spouses. It's important to take care of your health so that you can be around to enjoy the fruits of your labor while making the time for the people you love and want in your life. Another important aspect in personal is personal development. This means setting aside time to read books, attend seminars, and be around others that help fortify your habits so you can work more efficiently. The objective is to build positive habits that allow you to run important aspects on autopilot. So for for example, like brushing your teeth, you know, you don't need to think about how to do it. You just you just do it, right? You've learned it a long time ago and you just apply it today. For those that have a hard time prioritizing their well-being, try implementing one small habit that will help you and then repeat it every day and track your progress. So, for example, if you want to get into the habit of writing your goals down first thing in the morning over coffee, make a promise to yourself the night before that, uh, that, that you're going to follow through with this. You're going to keep that promise to yourself. Have everything ready the night before. You know, do the dishes. Get everything cleaned up, get the kitchen ready, put the, get the coffee pot ready to go, put the pen and the notepad on the kitchen table, and then from there you follow through. Maybe you spend a set amount of time writing your goals, like five minutes, or maybe the time it takes to finish your coffee. Then once you create that habit, and it's in place, and you make it a priority, it, it, it's eventually going to be something you do as a matter of course. Then you can add another month. You know, be careful not to add too many ha uh, habits at the same time because it takes time for our brains to adjust to accept a new habit. Uh, and, and then if, if you don't, you're going to quit partway through and then you won't do it. So those are my five tips on maintaining internal positivity while, while chasing your goals. Uh, you got to remind, remind yourself of, of what you're in control of, of changing. You got to watch that self-talk. Commit to the goal, not the path focus on measuring progress and make yourself a priority what do you guys think do you guys have any other strategies that you apply please let me know in the comments below and um, look forward to hear from you have a good weekend guys talk to you soon bye